So why is fat so irritatingly difficult? It's almost like this stubborn child that insists on doing the exact opposite of what you want. It's very easy to put on. It's very difficult to get rid of. Even if you lose some fat, you tend to run into these plateaus where after which the weight won't budge. And then you tend to put the fat back on. And then of course there are these stubborn areas like the lower belly or the hips and thighs where it absolutely refused to show any results. But you see the problem is this, everything that I've mentioned now is the way our mind is conditioned to look at stored fat. But your body sees it in a completely different way. And this begins our series on the fat paradox. So let's start by building an analogy. You live in a remote area and this is your truck and it's the source of your livelihood. So you use it and every time you run low on fuel, you take it to a nearby gas station in your area to refuel it. Simple. But there's a problem. Because this is a remote area, there are times when the pump runs out of fuel. And this could be for a day or it could be for a few days in a row, which is a serious problem for you. So what do you do? Simple. You invest in something that you would call your backup tank. The size of this tank is going to be based on exactly how much extra fuel you can afford after you've filled up your truck. Right? So you fill it up, fill the tank up. Now you have two options. One is from the pump, one is from the backup tank. But essentially what you do is go back to life as it was before, which is every time that the truck runs low, you go to the pump, you try to leave the backup tank as is until the pump runs out and then you start to drain the backup tank. And you obviously cross your fingers and you hope that this is going to last long enough until your the fuel is back in stock. All well and good. One day, the fuel pump makes an announcement that they have received an overstock of fuel. And hence they say, fine, we are going to sell fuel at one third the price. Just go with me here, right? So off you would go to the fuel pump, you would fill up uh, your truck, you would fill up the fuel tank. But would you stop there? No. You would procure or you would purchase more backup tanks and fill those up as well. And now life goes on as always, except that you now have more insurance because you have a larger backup. Let's now look at it the other way. You run into this time where there is an acute shortage of fuel and you reach this stage. What would you do with these? They've gone empty. Would you discard them? Remember, there was a time when you had one backup tank in your truck. No, you'd hold on to these because there is a chance that you'll be able to refill these later. You've invested them in them. Why throw them away, right? Let's consider another scenario. You are at this stage and another overstock situation happens in quick succession. What would happen now? You'd fill this and you'd try and store even more, right? The last thing you are ever going to do is try and give up or lose free fuel. At this point, you may be saying, Amit, where are you going with this? Right? Most of these decisions are almost automatic. They are intuitive. Let's now take a look in the human body. And essentially what I've shown you are the various places where fat tends to be stored. And let's take a look at a fat cell. There are a number of important hormonal systems that regulate how fat is stored, released, etc. But you're going to start seeing a few parallels here. The first, if these are fat cells, they have the ability to expand or grow as large as they possibly can in order to store more fuel. This is a concept that is known as hypertrophy. If fat cells have actually reached a point where they can't grow any larger and more fuel is available for storage, your body will simply make extra fat cells. It is going to create extra storage. This is something that is called hyperplasia. What if you started to lose fat and you managed to drain a number of these fat cells? What would happen to them? They would get retained. The fat cells may shrink, but you are not going to lose those fat cells. The empty storage tanks are retained just in case there is a chance of filling them up later. And here is the final kicker. There is absolutely no hormonal system in the body that has the ability to, stay, to say, we have stored more than enough. We do not need any more energy. Your body has the ability to almost indefinitely continue storing more and more fat. However, it has a very sensitive mechanism that is always tracking how much you are losing from your stores. And it has the ability to start resisting that very quickly. So essentially that creates a double whammy. You now have a body that has the ability to store, store a lot of it and fight like crazy to avoid losing it. 
Interesting parallels between what I show you in the human body and what we were doing with fuel. Yet, what was so obvious in one case, which was our truck and the fuel, why is it so irritatingly frustrating in the other? So as we wrap up this video, here's the primary takeaway. You may not like the fact that you see in the mirror, but to your body, it is immensely valuable fuel. And while you try various things to try and lose that fat, simultaneously your body is constantly adapting. It's figuring out how much is stored, how much is coming in, how much is being lost. And it's always trying to see what it can change in order to try and survive for as long as possible. It's not trying to be stubborn. It simply doesn't know any other way. This is the beginning of our journey of true lean. Because as you start to understand these mechanisms, the concepts of fat loss, health and fitness will all start to fall into place. If you've enjoyed the way Trulean presents the science behind fat loss, health and fitness, please like, subscribe and do share these videos.